Uh, I'd like to adjourn today's meeting in memory of former State Assemblywoman Carol Bentley Ellis. Throughout her lifetime, Carol was a pioneer for women in public service and served in the San Diego, served San Diego with dedication and focus. Carol was born to Irene Ingberg and Francis Curtis in Riverside, California in 1945 with her twin sister, Joy Curtis. From her earliest years, Carol was driven to forge her own path. Carol enrolled at SDSU, San Diego State University, uh, during, 19, during the 1960s. At that time, women were expected to major in home economics. Carol made the bold move to major in marketing and was often the only female student in her class. Carol quickly established herself as a hard worker on political campaigns, which later earned her positions on several state senators' staffs, opening the door to a career in public service. In 1988, Carol was elected to represent, the San, represent San Diego in California's 77th State Assembly District and became the minority whip in her first year in office. As an accomplished legislator, Carol focused on improving the criminal justice system and was known as a tenacious advocate for victims of crime. Some of her greatest accomplishments included being named Legislator of the Year by the San Diego Judges Association and being appointed to the Board of Parolee Hearings by Governor Pete Wilson, where she contributed more insight on reducing recidivism. Carol served diligently as a state assembly member until retiring in 1993, but her dedication to the community did not end with her time in the legislature. Driven to support other female trailblazers in politics, Carol became a faculty member of the Institute for Elected Women, mentoring newly elected women in the legislature. She also returned to her alma mater at, of SDSU to create an endowment for faculty excellence at Fowler College of Business, which enhanced the opportunities for faculty in her previous study of marketing. Carol's professional accomplishment, com, excuse me, professional accomplishments can only be matched by her legacy as a friend, a wife, and a sister. Her Mission Beach community will remember her for her good-natured energy, sense of humor, and love of food with the Mission Beach Lunch Group. Carol passed away on December 13, 2021, due to heart failure, and is survived by her twin sister, Joy Curtis. She is joined by her late husband, State Senator Jim Ellis, in rest. Carol was beloved by the people she served and will be deeply missed by her San Diego community. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. I also uh, have another uh, sad moment here. It's with great sadness that I adjourn in tonight's meeting in memorandum of Don Coaches, <clears throat> the executive director of Whispering Winds Catholic Camp near Julian. He was a former Del Cerro resident and passed away on November 19th, 2021, after a courageous fight with cancer. Don was born July 15th, 1935 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to George and Agnes Coaches. After attending Notre Dame High School in Milwaukee, he became the community's six foot five basketball icon. From 1957 to 61, he attended Marquette University, where he blossomed into the basketball player who would later go on to the NBA from 1963 to 1974. While at Marquette, Don was a two-time um, uh, All-American, setting multiple school rebound records that remain unbroken today. He has the 13th overall pick for the Chicago Pactors in 1961's NBA draft. But Don elected to play for the 66, 66ers in the National Industrial Basketball League. Throughout his career, Don was known for his smooth jumps, hustle, sharp elbows, and leaping ability. Don found his life calling 
After attending a Protestant family camp in 1976, Don was inspired to create a deeply spiritual and personal experience for, for people in his community. Joined by his friend, Dr. Jerry Teasy, the two founded the perfect spot in, in the Cuyamaca Mountains near Julian and built it from the ground up. Throughout the years, the camp has provided a haven to thousands of individuals to step away from the hustle and bustle of their lives and connect with nature and most importantly, God. The camp has blossomed with ministries to meet the needs of everyone, including families with special needs, military, and even families, unfortunately, who are separated. Whispering Winds was a testament to Don's character and a reflection of his devotion to faith. He put his heart and soul into the camp and was truly an exceptional leader. In 2013, Don was given the Ernie Wright Humanitarian Award at the Breitbart Salute to Champions for, co for, excuse me, for co-founding and helping build Whispering Winds. Don was preceded in death by his parents and his brother, George and Tom. He is survived by his wife, Maureen, three sons, Dan, Mike, and the respective families, uh, his sister, uh, Barbara, and their several nieces and nephews. Don will be missed as a family man, an all-star athlete, a community champion, and his devotion to his faith will live through whispering winds. Thank you for allowing me to honor him.